Hi, my name is Julian Abrams here from Columbia University. I'm here today to discuss with you our paper Adherence to Biopsy Guidelines for Barrett's Esophagus Surveillance in the Community Setting in the United States. We first became interested in this subject when my co-first author, Dr. Robert Capel from Danbury Hospital in Connecticut, who is also a clinical research consultant for Keras Diagnosis, Diagnostics, approached us. Keras Diagnostics is a national community-based gastroenterology group that contracts with ambulatory surgery centers throughout the country. We all share an interest in Barrett's esophagus, and Dr. Capel suggested that we investigate quality measures in endoscopic surveillance. The current ACG guidelines for endoscopic surveillance in BE call for four quadrant biopsies every two centimeters along the length of Barrett's. Our study aims were one, to determine what the rate of adherence is to these guidelines in the community setting, two, to determine what factors are associated with adherence to these guidelines, and three, to determine whether adherence to these guidelines is associated with the detection of dysplasia. The source for our data was the Keras Diagnostics database, which has been maintained prospectively since 2001. Using the clinical indication recorded for each case, we identified cases of patients with established Barrett's esophagus. We then recorded data on patient demographics, clinical indication, the pathology findings, and in cases in which we had linked endoscopy reports, the length of Barrett's esophagus, and the presence of and size of hiatal hernia. We defined adherence by calculating a ratio of the number of esophageal biopsies divided by the length of Barrett's esophagus for each case. A ratio of less than two was defined as non-adherent, and a ratio of greater than or equal to two was defined as adherent, being felt that ratio of greater than two represented at least four biopsies for every two centimeters. We identified nearly 11,000 patients with established Barrett's esophagus. 2,245 of these also had linked endoscopy reports in which the length of Barrett's esophagus was recorded. We found that only 51% of the cases were adherent to guidelines as defined by our ratio. Longer segment Barrett's esophagus was associated with a significantly decreased odds of adherence to these guidelines. Finally, stratified by Barrett's length, Non-adherence was associated with a significantly decreased odds of detecting dysplasia with a summary odds ratio of 0.53. What can we conclude from these findings? One, I think we can conclude that there's poor adherence to the biopsy guidelines in the community setting. This is not necessarily a surprise. However, more importantly, we found that non-adherence is associated with markedly decreased detection of dysplasia. And non-adherence to these guidelines may significantly diminish the beneficial effects of endoscopic surveillance with respect to the early detection of high-grade dysplasia and esophageal adenocarcinoma, which is ultimately the purpose of endoscopic surveillance in the first place. What future directions should we now take? I think future studies should look at identifying factors associated with non-adherence to these guidelines. And finally, once these factors have been identified, then methods should be implemented in an attempt to improve adherence. Thank you very much, and I'd like to acknowledge Keras Diagnostics, as well as our, my co-authors, uh, Dr. Rob Capel, Guy Lindbergh, M.H. Saborian, Rob Genta, Al Nugget, and Charles Lightdale. Thank you.